Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. AITA for uninviting my mom to our wedding after she invited my fiancé's estranged father. I, 34M, am getting married to my fiancé, 29F, in two weeks, after 13 years of friendship and four years of dating. Honestly our relationship has been amazing and wedding planning has been a breeze. My fiancé's super close with my parents, especially since her own mom passed away last year. They've kind of taken her in as one of their own, which she really appreciates. Now, here's where things get messy. My fiancé has been no contact with her dad since she was 15. He was a major factor in her depression and low self-esteem growing up, and it took her years to heal from all the emotional damage. She's in a good place now, and neither of us ever considered inviting him to the wedding. It was a firm boundary, and my fiancé was crystal clear about it. My mom, however, just couldn't let it go. She's a retired psychologist and has some experience with parent-child reunifications. She's been on this mission, thinking my fiancé Anitza to reconnect with her dad, especially now that her mom is gone. Both my fiancé and I have told her countless times that's not happening, but she didn't take the hint. She doesn't even know my fiancé's father, yet still feels like she knows what's best for her. Well, the other night, we were having dinner with my family, and my mom dropped the bombshell. She had tracked down my fiancé's estranged father, met up with him, and invited him to our wedding. She was so proud of herself, like she had done something amazing. Meanwhile, the rest of my family was horrified. They all know the history, and how much this guy hurt my fiancé. Somehow, my fiancé stayed calm. She told my mom how hurtful and inappropriate it was, how it broke her trust completely. I was furious, and ended up uninviting my mom right then and there. We left and when we got home, my fiancé finally broke down. Now, my mom's been calling me non-stop, crying, saying she didn't mean to cause all this drama. My dad, who thinks what she did was wrong, still thinks I should talk to her and hear her out. My siblings also feel like uninviting her was too much. But honestly, all I can think about is the pain she caused my fiancé. She feels so unsafe now that we're considering cancelling the wedding altogether, just to avoid the possibility of her father showing up. I'm furious at my mom and don't know if I even want to hear her out. So, AITA for uninviting my mom after she completely ignored our boundaries and invited my fiancé's estranged dad to the wedding. I met up with my dad earlier today. He's genuinely sorry for what my mom did, and admitted that he shouldn't have pushed me to hear her out right away. I told him this situation isn't just about me my fiancé is the one who was hurt the most, and she's the one who gets to decide how we move forward. My dad even offered to help cover any additional costs we might have if we have to rearrange things. Both of my siblings called separately to apologize to my fiancé too, which I think is a good start. But honestly, I'm still not ready to talk to my mom. My fiancé's brother-in-law suggested we might want to move the wedding up, like do it sooner and keep the venue. We're still working out the details but it might actually be a good plan. At least then we won't have to cancel the whole thing. The biggest thing is, we are married. In the end, my wife's sister and B.I.L. saved the day. Originally the wedding was on the 18th at B.I.L.'s restaurant, that was the date and place where we went from friends to dating five years ago. On the day of the op, wife went to see her sister, they suggested having the wedding a week earlier, on the 11th. It felt like the best option, B.I.L. was willing to do the work, because wife is like a sister to him. His team and him got a generous tip from my dad. Wife is I.L. B.I.L. and I told all the guests, save my family of the date change. Wife didn't want to tell people why. Amazingly, everyone made it work except for three people. My family was told the morning of the wedding, just to make sure wife's father would not have time to come to the wedding, as he lives 15 hours away from us. My family didn't complain because they knew that they messed up. It was all a bit stressful, but my wife felt like a spy on a mission and had fun with it. I was glad to see her get excited again. And there was no sign of her father at the wedding, so I guess mom finally listened. In the week before the wedding, we met my family to talk several times. These were long, long talks. Why my mom did it? She just thought she knew better. No excuse other than arrogance. They all apologized. My wife said, one family torn apart by her father's actions was enough. She insisted that they were invited. So that was that. However, we made it clear that contact with her father would be punished much harder in the future, especially when it comes to children. It's forgiven but not forgotten, I guess. As to what wife's father found out from my mom, apparently not much. He knew a bunch already, from my wife's eldest brother. Mom filled in gaps. That brother is the only of my wife's siblings that was still in touch with their father. 
Brother and wife were on thin ice before that already for many, but different reasons. Yes, we let that brother attend the wedding, mostly because we didn't want more drama. But we'll tackle that when wife feels ready to do so. We did have a honeymoon to get to first. All in all, I think we are fine. Wife is very hurt still, more so by her brother's actions now. With my family, we'll work on it. The imminent threat is dealt with, now we start fixing the damage. Through it all, my wife was amazingly calm and reflected. It made me much more grateful that I get to be with her. Comment Aurelissa Ravens Congrats I love your wife's comment, one family torn up by my father's actions is enough, and that being the impetus for moving forward with forgiveness. May you have many years of wedded bliss. As someone who's been happily married for 23 years, we have two rules. 1. Never go to bed angry with each other as sometimes you just need to say, I love you, and we'll see how we feel about things when we're not tired, typically, you forgot why you were fighting in the first place. 2. Never sleep apart because you're upset with one another. Cracks in a marriage are like a sidewalk, in that they only get bigger over time, so you need to provide constant maintenance. Again, congrats. And again, and a. Economy voice. Respectfully, the never go to bed angry advice isn't always good. I've been married 16 years and my parents nearly 50, we all agree that sometimes it's better to pause the argument and go to bed, the next morning, cooler slash calmer heads prevail, and things didn't get said when we were tired and heated. I'd rather us go to bed angry and resolve it in the morning than have anyone say something they'd regret. My husband is the same way. Usually things look much less fraught in the morning. Every couple and person is different. My best advice is for a couple to learn how they each handle conflict and come up with their own conflict management plan. If they have an understand of how they want to address disagreements, it'll be easier to manage fairly when they happen. I'm glad your plan works for you. Artistic Respectfully, the never go to bed angry advice isn't always good. Lol, I agree with this. My husband and I have been married over 20 years, and when we first got married, that's the advice I heard from so many people. So we tried it. But I get exhausted when we argue, and we would try to work things out until 2M sometimes, and we just get more and more frustrated. And I'm not a reasonable person when I'm exhausted, I'm sorry but that's the truth. Finally we admitted to each other that, don't go to bed angry didn't work for us, so we would just go to bed even if we were really angry, and things always seemed better in the morning. So yeah, we learned that you don't have to finish an argument before bedtime, lol. At least not for us. Maybe it works for other people though, so just take it with a grain of salt. Asphias. I think the saying should be amended to include that it does not mean you have to solve the fight you had before going to bed. It is very well possible to say something like, look, we still have to solve whatever happened today, let's sleep on it, and talk about it tomorrow, but know that I do want to try and work it out with you, let's get through this together. Thanks for watching till the end, wishing you an awesome day, feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share, I'd love to hear from you.